What's up guys, it's Joel Messenger, and today we have an entirely new design with an entirely new material for Avatar Month. Let's get started. This is Discord Design. All right, so the structure of this video is gonna be a little bit different and they're all gonna go like this video from here on out for Discord Design. I will announce the winner immediately. We'll get into the design and at the very end of the video, I will be announcing the next challenge. So the winner of this challenge is IBBY06 with this design right here. Personally, I'm a huge fan of this design. I always really, really liked this weapon, seeing it in the show. And uh, it's because I really liked Mei and her concealed weapons. I liked her fighting style. It was very stealthy, utilized a lot of tools because she herself is not a bender, but she still has to contend with, uh, you know, Azula being her friend and Ty Lee having all that chi blocking crap. So I'm very, very excited to attempt to be making a cosplay safe version of that today. And so now we get into the actual design of the knife itself. Now I'm sure those of you who used FreeCAD before are wondering why I don't just use the image feature to take the image, put it in the background, trace it exactly, pad it, chamfer it for blades, and call it a day. Now, as good of an idea as that sounds, the issue is that your drawings aren't always to scale, and if they are to scale, they're not to a scale that I particularly like all the time. Uh, in this case, I'm not even scaling to my hands or Modern Ninja's hands. I'm scaling them to a third-party tester hands. Her name's That Sword Chick. Uh, her Instagram is in the description. You should check her out. I'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, but the main issue here is there are also some design changes that I want to make. Number one, I, I want to make that ring at the bottom thicker, okay? Modern Ninja broke the ring in the last video. I want to make sure this one doesn't happen the same thing. The other thing I want to change about this design is much, much more complicated. If you notice the wings, I in my design here, they're not canted outwards like they're on the drawing. They're canted inwards to make a more elliptical shape, and the blades are on the outside rather than on the inside. This is to create, as much as possible, laminar airflow while it's being thrown. Now, to achieve that, of course, it does have to be almost perfectly horizontal. However, I want to give us laminar flow every chance it can get. Let me explain a little bit. When you're calculating drag of a force, you need something called a Reynolds number for a constant. A Reynolds number is determined by a lot of different factors, okay? But it determines whether or not you'll have laminar flow. When the Reynolds number is underneath 2100, you get laminar flow like you see here going over the airflow. Smooth, straight, predictable airflow. When it hits a flat surface like you see here, you get turbulent flow, which creates vacuum spaces on the other side. It creates unpredictable airflow over the top and over the bottom. What's more is those vacuums and unpredictable airflows will be hitting the rest of the knife and interrupting its flight, giving it a weird pattern and make it harder and harder to stick into your target. Back from the printer and we have our Mark I knife. And I think it looks personally great. I also think that given the measurements she gave us, um, that sword chick has hands that are the same size as mine. But he said I had small hands. They're not small, are they? My God, that's awesome. Uh, but yeah, her hands are gonna be about the same size as mine. That's kind of that's kind of cool. So I'll be able to use all of these, and I'm pretty excited about that. Now, aside from that, looking at the design, it's those concerns that I talked about in the drafting stage, where this ring is really really small. Those are super present. Those are super super present because. A certain someone, not to name any names, did destroy the throwing ring on the last knife. So as you can see, I actually broke the circular bit off of the end of this one right here, so it doesn't... Um... Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in for a Mark II. I'm gonna thicken this ring up, and I think that's gonna be the only thing I change. This is, personally, I think it's just absolutely gorgeous. The feeling is going to be beautiful. A lot of you are probably noticing that this is a new material from the one last time. It's not black, it's got a little bit more reflective quality. And that's because this time we are printing with a new material, like I mentioned in the intro. The material that we're printing with today is PETG. Now PETG is important because this is actually going to be made from recycled bottles. That's important. This also goes into the factor of uh, the fact that Modern Ninja broke the last one, and the fact that it is going to be stronger than the last material, not because it's resistant, not because it's stiffer, okay, those are different, stiffness and strength are different, but this is goes into a much longer elastic region, right, meaning that it'll stretch or it'll bend or change when undergoing stress or heat, 
as opposed to ABS. So when this is gonna, this is gonna bend more, as you can see here, we have a lot more flex. All right, it's going to flex, it's gonna bounce. All right, so when it's dropped, we don't have to worry about it breaking, okay? It's gonna bounce, it's gonna twist. And so hopefully, uh, if that sword chick is really rough on these and throws through them in her garage or something, they're not gonna break when it ricochets off of the wall, but we'll see. Regardless of that, I'm still gonna go in for a Gen 2. We're gonna thicken up that ring, as you'll see right now. Now, another desirable quality that Pet G has as a material that we didn't talk about earlier is that it is waterproof. Um, you know, it originally once was a bottle, so if we take this, which is printed in only 25% infill, we can actually fill it up with liquid. It will hold that liquid, and it won't sweat that liquid out like you'll see with ABS or PLA. The other interesting thing is that this is actually food safe, so it's not, there's not any um, heavy metals or materials in it. There's not going to be any kind of that dangerous stuff that would make it uh, not good to drink from, like say, ABS or PLA. Ah, uh, pinky up because I'm fancy. Modern Ninja's going to love that SpongeBob reference. All right, so that aside now, the waterproofing is great, but not super necessary for a knife. But one issue that it does cause is it causes paint to run. This is our Mark II. As you can see here, we have that as talked about, the thicker ring here at the bottom and the paint, it took the first layer of black really well. But that second layer of red tended to run, tended to bleed quite a lot. It turned my little Fire Nation insignia thing into just the red sun of Imperial Japan. Uh, wait, that makes sense. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so that aside though, it's gonna take a layer of primer in between each layer of paint, as you'll see here, as we paint our next version of. Something else that IBBY06 left in their designs is that they left a sheath for the knife. It's a pretty interesting knife to have shape-wise, so a sheath would be very difficult. Now the sheath shown here has some issues being that uh, the tip of the knife would break it. So it's gonna need to be redesigned a little bit and we're gonna go into that right now. So for this sheath, we decided to go with the simplest common denominator. I wanted to go with kind of this spade shape just so that way it covers the entire back of the knife and so we have the edges down towards the bottom getting past the point where the curvature starts to neck in. Hopefully with the flexibility of Pet G that I mentioned earlier, it'll be able to create kind of a Kydex grip like they have on a certain Glock and Sig model. So it'll really kind of clip it in naturally and won't need too much external uh, forces holding it into the sheath. Apart from that, there's a couple of little loops down there on the back to, for, to allow string attachments and uh, we'll see how this works out. Okay, so... Um like most good things in my life, when I got done with the sheath, I broke it. Uh, yeah, it broke almost immediately. The little tabs broke off because they were way too flimsy. So, oh crap. Uh, <laughs> we need to go into a complete and total redesign, but we can still proof of concept that the size and shape work. As evidenced here, we have our little Gen 2 knife, you slide the tip in, and oh, look at that! It fits, it doesn't shake out, it doesn't pull out. You have to lift it and then pull. So the design works, and that's great. I'm very psyched about that, but we're definitely gonna need to toughen it up. We're definitely gonna need to change our print orientation so that we don't have so much freaking support material up through here. And I'm gonna need to make these, uh, these QD belt mounts much, much tougher. 
And much like the previous Mark II redesign we did on the knife and my diet during quarantine, the only thing we're really doing here is making everything fatter from the walls to the mounts themselves, as well as adding some reinforcement in between to resist lateral motion when we tie those strings in real tight. I went ahead and skipped the uh, painting phase because I figured you guys had enough shots of me and the gas mask just painting something in my garage. So you can see here we painted it in red so we get that red and black, that Fire Nation color going on. I have these straps wrapped multiple times around here between the pins so you can fit your hand through. Uh, we'll see what that sword chick does with it, but theoretically you could also do it with your forearm. I don't have it tied off so that way the length is, is always variable and you have this end, you pull it taut and wrap it up in your fingers however works for you. So it will constantly be tensioned against the grip of your fist rather than having a set tension that will flex with the change in temperature or the change in your fist. The knife of course is what we've already seen before. Excellent balance. Straight black in the red so now the black on the red field. You have kind of that Fire Nation insignia look to it. You can't shake it free. It draws, it throws. It's an excellent, excellent design really super thrilled with it so far and also how it works in with the sheath all right so that wraps it up for this episode of discord design i hope you really liked it i super enjoyed the weapon i super enjoyed the design this challenge was really super cool for me i got to try out a bunch of different things uh 3d design and 3d print wise and i got to change this design up a little bit i think the knife itself is just super cool the balance is excellent and I've always had a huge thing for me and Avatar. So this has been just all around great for me. Uh, this is not gonna be going to Modern Ninja. The second stage of this video will be, as I previously mentioned, done by That Sword Chick. Her Instagram handle is in the description. Be sure to uh, check her out before the second issue of this video drops. I'll actually be mailing this exact copy to her to try out and see what she thinks about it. The next section of Discord design will be based around Cyberpunk 2077. As soon as this video drops, that text channel in the Discord is going to change. So be sure to join the Discord, draw up a design, be it a picture drawing you do with pen and pencil and send it in, or a digital drawing you do on your iPod, computer, whatever. You can even make a 3D CAD file yourself and we'll bring it on here. We'll tweak it, make it into a weapon, and make a video about it. Be sure to get into the Discord before you send those designs. Now, as far as purchasing these, we will be making five, a limited run of five of these. If you want one, be sure to join the Discord. The details will be there with Modern Ninja. Join the Discord, message Modern Ninja, be one of the first five to do so, and you can purchase one of these. We cannot tell you how much they cost on this video because how YouTube uh, is with money, but you go to the Discord, we can give you pricing details there. Uh, that about covers it for the May 9th design. I'm Joel Messenger, this has been Discord Design, and I'm out.